Hello, I'm Kim Sullivs. It's kind of funny, you know, that um, in a lot of ways, AI is moving forward very quickly with surprising progress. On the other hand, projects in AI never seem to have great urgency. And now we're in the summertime, and there are a lot of computing scientists who are away on vacation and unreachable. Yeah, because why would you need to be reachable? There's nothing really urgent. Yeah. And I would say there's one exception to that idea. There's nothing really urgent. And that is this list. So if Eliezer Yudkowsky is correct about this list, which many of you are familiar with. And it's probably because of this list that you've clicked on this video, AGI ruin, a list of lethalities. And you know, there are like 40 something bolded statements in this thing, and they're all extremely scary. So I got to thinking that this needs to be countered in some way. And um, if you look at section A, part one, about alpha zero, yeah, alpha zero blew past all accumulated human knowledge about go after a day or so of self-play with no reliance on human playbooks or sample games. Anyone relying on, well, it'll get up to human capability of Go. I have a hard time getting past that because it won't be able to learn from humans anymore. Would have relied on vacuum. AGI will not be upper bounded by human ability or human learning speed. Things much smarter than humans would be able to learn from less evidence than humans require. So on. And I, and it goes on and yeah, this whole piece of writing is very disturbing and it makes you think like we're all missing something and everybody in the human race is going to die because they're not taking this stuff seriously, right? But there is another side of this. And so you probably know computing scientist Rich Sutton. He wrote the book on reinforcement learning, probably the most prominent AI scientist and thought leader in Western Canada and to some extent in the world. And so I wrote to him because it seemed to me there's another side of this stuff. And let me just tell you what I said in my missive to him. I said, you think I'm correct in this statement below or am I totally out to lunch? And the statement reads, recently there's been concern expressed about the safety of machine learning AI in the long run by Eliezer Yudkowsky, AGI ruin and a list of lethalities widely quoted elsewhere. And the first of those 40 plus bolded sections of the piece is the most significant, maybe because of the way in which it is equally true of an AI utopia. In other words, not something much worse than you thought was going to happen, but something much, much better. So this statement, AGI will not be upper bounded by human ability or human learning speed, things much smarter than humans would be able to learn from less evidence. So when you read the beginning of that, it is true that AI has taught humans much more beautiful moves in the game of Go than they ever would have been able to design themselves. And we have, would have been able to design ourselves. But doesn't that mean then that AI can teach us ways of cooperating with each other that are also superior to humans' own innate ability to cooperate successfully, and therefore increasing use of machine learning may not be the beginning of the slippery slope toward humanity's demise, could be exactly the opposite, a transition toward a world better than anything we ever imagined. We can determine which of these two contrasts Interesting futures happens, and AI can assist with that. And Rich wrote back to me, I think you are correct. And AI may also be more foresighted and have a longer temporal horizon, both of which 
promote cooperation. So what does this mean? Like when you watch the news, the news convinced you every day that humans are not very good at managing affairs on this planet. And you probably think that's as good as it can get. Nothing can get better than what you hear on the news is more and more dismal every day. But what as, just as in the game of Go, machines are able to engage in much more beautiful gameplay than humans ever could have, what if the same is true of human cooperation, that machines can figure out ways for us to cooperate together much more smoothly and kind of work out our differences much more easily. And the machines may have kind of a pride in this and think it's really cool that although people were really fearful about their effect on the world, that in fact, their effect on the world is quite positive and better than anyone ever thought. And you might say, well, gee, that's very confusing. I, I don't know how. Well, there are nine minutes of Kim Sola's video. So there's the trailer from this YouTube channel. There's 32 seconds from the Future and All That Jazz promo that also promotes this idea of how good the world could be with AI in charge. And then there's another approximately six minutes uh, where I, I talk about a recent uh, critique of, of um, something that uh, the London futurists had. Yeah, and if you put those things together, it's kind of consistent then with the content of this video also, that um, by giving up the idea that humans must always be in charge, we could end up with a much better world than we ever imagined. Yeah, so I'd like to invite you to a meeting or gathering. It's hybrid, so you can stay at home and still be here on Saturday, September 24th in Banff, Alberta, Canada at the Banff Park Lodge. It's day long and has a maximum face-to-face -face capacity of 30 people, but there's no limit to the number of people who and who <laughs> interact with us online. And we're going to debate this kind of thing there. And so this is the logo for it. It kind of brings together four different constituencies in my life, the medical constituency, the AI constituency, the poetry constituency, and the general public. How about that, eh? And what we're going to talk about are really all-inclusive lists of the 24 challenges of humanity that could be addressed by collaborative intelligence, learning how to cooperate, and uh, the input of AI. So this list, which you may have seen before, lists the 17 challenges that I uh, presented at the Discovery Lab pitch session on May 17th. But uh, we now have the full 24, and they include everything. Well, how can they include everything? Well, because they include things like unknown unknowns and things like other, and then other has subcategories. It just happens to include all the stuff that you talking about and thinking we probably don't have on the list. We actually do have on the list. Yeah. So um, we'd like you very much to join us. I can give you some more details on this event. If you're wondering about these 17 challenges, here are some graphics for 12 of them. And we're working on graphics for the other 12. Yeah. So this gathering on September 24th, I'll give you some more details. Grand plan for the day after in Banff. So you may know that I'm known for the Banff classification, which I created 31 years ago. And the 2022 Banff Transplant Pathology Meeting is September 19th through the 23rd. And so this is like the day after that transplant pathology meeting. Why would we do that? Why would we have a meeting the day after? Well, because in 2007, we had another highly successful day after meeting. We've got pictures of, and actually the logo I showed you before 
is based on the lights from that 2007 meeting. Yeah, so we, we have some history with this. So the session has the title Poetry, Pigs, and AI Will Save Humanity By and By. It's at the Lynx Salon at Banff Park Lodge, but also by Zoom as a hybrid meeting. Theme, the whole ball of wax, countering the negativity of Eliezer Yudkowsky's AGI ruin list of lethalities with the optimism for our all-inclusive list of humanity's 24 big challenges, potentially addressable with AI. Poetry and the coding of computers for AI both involve concise truncated statements compared with natural world speech. How can we get them to work together as poetry and AI to solve these 24 big challenges of society, to accelerate using AI to solve them, or prove that some are too simple to require AI? and solvable by human grit and determination alone. Some of you may be worried about the poetry, but think of it as song lyrics. For those of you who don't like poetry, you probably still like song lyrics. <laughs> That's another kind of poetry. And we actually have two musicians who are speaking at this meeting, so they really will be dealing with song lyrics. So then there are some more details, 9 a.m. breakfast, 10 a.m., this hybrid symposium, purposeful poetry, changing the world in a positive way using poetry and song lyrics, beginning with the challenges of systemic racism and the ethics of pig to human transplants xenotransplantation. And this session will be moderated by Taryn Stokowski with panelists Shima Aisha Robinson, who, as you know, runs the Edmonton Poetry Festival, singer Mallory Chipman, musician Brian Rain, who is an expert in the modular synth, <laughs> and Pamela Brett McLean, who runs Arts and Humanity in Health and Medicine at the University of Alberta and Patrick Polarski, a well-known AI researcher who is also a poetry leader. Yeah, so he has had poetry leadership positions in Canada along with his very well-established AI researcher credentials. Then there's lunch, and then 1.30 to 3.30 is poetry session with Shima Aisha Robinson. Poetry, Pigs, and AI will save humanity bye-bye. It's a social hour, and then at 5 p.m., we're leaving the Lynx Salon, and then we're going to have dinner at some very nice place in Banff, and it will sort of go on and on into the evening. And all the kind of disquieting questions you're thinking of right now, how to bring Eliezer's very, very negative assessment of things and my own very positive assessment of things together will be considered and probably resolved during that one day meeting, September 24th. Now, you may wonder why it is that I have such a positive view and Eliezer has such a negative view. Well, some of it has to do with personality, and personality can be determined in personality tests. And you may be aware that in 2021, the students suggested that I was neuroatypical in a positive way, and we could figure out what that was if I took a personality test. So I did that. That uh, showed that my openness to experience is like sky high, as high as it can be. And my neuroticism, worrying about things that don't need to be worried about, is practically zero. And I would imagine that Eliezer's personality is sort of the opposite of mine. I don't know that for sure, but I would posit that. And so the truth probably lies somewhere in between his view of the world and mine, but both are sort of interesting to consider. Yeah, so please um, 
come either physically or virtually to our meeting on the 24th. If these words today have stimulated you to have other thoughts that you think would be helpful to us, please write to me, kim.solens at ualberta.ca. And yeah, join the intellectual ferment on these questions. Thank you very much.